Spring is arriving. Flowers are blooming. Birds are chirping. The seasons are changing. The only constant thing in life is Leaks Player's toxic behavior that sucks any enjoyment from the game. But let's not focus on that. Hi, I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're in Chantarium. And today we will be making Spirit Blossom Syndra in collaboration with our friend Elisa from Moonlight Jewel. Enjoy! Since this outfit is nothing like anything I had in my pattern stash, I played around a lot with Matilda to prepare the patterns for the outfit, as I needed to have them to make all of the graphics for the vinyl cutting later. Here's a quick rundown of all of my prototypes that I made for this, because there's a lot of them. Sleeve, first try, very happy about that. Shirt, I think this is like the third prototype, because there was the drafted version, and then this version, and then this version, which I still think could use a little bit of full bus adjustment let's just say. Then the belt is a third version. The first one was too short, this one was too tall, and this one's fine. Bow, first try, very good. The thingies that come off of this, zeroth try, I'm not even gonna try them. And the pants, I had to do a gathered design here, even though it doesn't look like it in the original, but it's a 3D model, so cut me some slack. And this is the third prototype. So I'm gonna sew most of these for the fourth time now. Wish me luck. Alex went a little crazy and purchased some vinyls for this project. The Cricut got a real workout because there was no piece that didn't have any embellishments on it. I started by cutting some gold trims for the blouse. For every color you need to slap it on the mat, make the machine cut it out, this was my first time with vinyl from this brand and it didn't go perfectly. I didn't really give myself any indication of where to put things on the fabric. I should have thought this through better. I decided that I'm gonna try parchment paper. Because I tried other things to put in between the iron and the vinyl and I think you're supposed to use a special Teflon sheet, but I ain't got that sheet. <laughs> the parchment works surprisingly well. I tried doing what the instructions said, but the vinyl was quite the drama queen throughout the process. The first one came out great. It's so epic! Uh oh, this one didn't stick. Yeah, it was messy. Probably my error though, lack of constant heat and pressure. I repressed the sleeves without the packing and as predicted, it changed the glossy texture of the vinyl. It stopped being so epic. It didn't turn out super perfect and I think that nobody's gonna know. For the other part of the sleeve, I did bring out the big iron and it was a mistake as big as said iron. Also, I started to sing the Jeopardy thank song and it distracted me and I pressed it a bit too long, I think. Uh oh. have girl bossed a little bit too close to the sun. I ruined it. This one's also, I think, too hot. Hot damn! Okay, we're gonna go back to my iron. I maybe need to check the instructions. Oh, I have to recut this. Eh. I fixed it off camera and now let's sew. I have the pieces for the blouse laid out as they need to be connected for both the fashion fabric and lining. Let's put them together with the magic of video editing, shall we? Oops, that's not it. That's better. I left a hole in the side of the lining to turn the blouse out after. Now that the pieces are together, I can press the bottom hem with gold trim. I will need to sew right at the line where this trim ends, because I didn't think I should sew through the vinyl, so I need to see where that is. I'm going to trace it using a light pad, which I don't have, but the iPad displaying just white will do the same trick. Now that I know where to sew, I'm going to attach the lining and the main bodice all around. Well, this better turn out good! I made sure to press the garment from the inside so I don't burn the vinyl on the other side and I made sure it looked nice and crisp. I hand stitched the lining hole. <laughs> so the prototype had some ribbons to tie it so I'm gonna need to add them to the final version but I love it already! The gold makes it look like a million dollars. Even though it's such a simple blouse, when the rest of the clothes are there, you will see that every component adds to the whole visual experience of the outfit. League characters never disappoint with their character designs, and neither does Life Makeover, today's video sponsor. I kid you not, the moment I turned this game on, I was so impressed with the fashion designs that you can unlock in this game, cause it's a dress up game. Of course there's gonna be a lot of outfits, but look at this, the bunny outfit is so cute. And this one, the flowery one, I'm just thinking how do I make that as a dress? 
And uh, my favorite one is the crane dance outfit. It gets me every time and I want it and I want to be a Chinese princess. And I keep coming to Alex to show her stuff and ask her, Can we make all of them? Because this aesthetic would be perfect for a BJD. My character is this really cute girl and I did this little photo shoot and then I changed her and I did another photo shoot. And you should see my face when I unlock the design studio where you can make your own sewing patterns and custom clothes. Guys, if you don't see me for a while, I will be playing this game. Global pre-registrations for Life Makeover are now open and if you want to play this game as soon as it comes out, make sure to check out our link in the description down below. Thanks! The bell sleeves are separate from the blouse and are two truncated cones joined together. I add the small cone to the big cone four times, twice for the fashion fabric, twice for the lining. And in the lining this connection needs a gap for turning. I made everything with lining to avoid staining and to make sure that the edges are nicer. I attach one main and one lining together at the curves and because this is unlike anything I made before, my brain wasn't sure I was doing this right. Now that these are there, sewn together, I think I'm gonna have to open up this seam to turn it out later. What I need to do now is fold it onto itself and stitch along this opening. I hope that works. Did it work though? Vote now in the comments down below. I have zero expectation of this working. No, it's actually gonna work! <gasps> Yo, I am a genius! After this excessive patting myself on the back, the white fabric pieces were done. Trumpets! <laughs> Finished. <laughs> All three of us, me, Barb and Eliza, decided that a semi-real aesthetic will be perfect for League characters, so we're using a G01 sculpt. Unfortunately, we have semi-real heads in every color except cinnamon, so there's going to be a little bit of change to the skin tone. Some time ago, I did a few face-up commissions, and one of the clients wanted a blue head for Fee, or Fi, from The Legend of Zelda. We decided that the perfect solution will be a semi-real sculpt with anime eyes, so I enlarged the eye hole. And I fell in love with this look, so I'm going to do the same here. Then it's time for modifications. I added a bit of epoxy sculpt air drying clay to the lips, nose and ears. I was using a 3D model from the game as a reference, because it's hard to say what's going on in the splash art. It's gorgeous, but not very helpful. <laughs> and now we have a cute elf. I heard the painting a little bit and um, I maybe should do a little bit more sanding or maybe a layer of primer to see if the clay blends with the skin well, but I didn't and now we have to live with the consequences. I would like to avoid comments about whitewashing, please. I don't see the point of buying an expensive doll head in the right color only to modify it with grey clay and cover it all with paint just like I did here. Unfortunately, we couldn't use an airbrush to paint the face because we lent it to a friend and forgot to get it back on time. The paint job is not the smoothest, I know, but I'm pretty sure I can manage it with a proper face-up. I'm starting with a few layers of varnish and then MSC for a good grip texture. Then it's time for some basic. Some basic features like eye shape, eyebrows and color on the lips. When I like the sketch, I set it with MSC, wait 30 minutes for spray to dry and add more saturated and dark colors. On a painted head, the surface is taking the pigment like crazy. I would say too much even. Every mistake is visible. <laughs> I can't cheat, you know. <laughs> I'm adding lashes and a few delicate freckles. I like how dolls look with a semi-realistic skin texture on their faces and I also love freckles. And because we have a lot of brush strokes to cover, she's getting a lot of both. <laughs> the original model has very dark and thick brows, but I guess it's for them to be visible from far and from a certain angle. My plan for her face expression is a bit different than here. I want a vibe from the splash art. Delicate, dreamy and girly. I'm accentuating the nose bridge and making the nose wings more visible. I even added a hint of nostrils for a more realistic look. Don't tell Barb because she don't like semi-real sculpts with nostrils on smart dolls. Doesn't. She doesn't like, <laughs> yes. Don't tell Barb. Barb is next to me. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm adding my favorite step, which is white details with acrylic paint. Something was missing in the I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something was missing in the eye area and I decided to go for downward pointing lashes. I started with white, but then I added a layer of purple on top to make them more delicate. On this splash art, Syndra has her lips open and I want the same look on our doll. 
I'm painting the teeth, being very careful not to make them too big. Lastly, I added more lashes to the bottom and a layer of shiny pearlix powder. Later I did a few tweaks to correct some places, like the inner corners of the eyes, and I also added cute little earrings. Before I could continue sewing, we needed to get fabrics in the right color, so we went to our local thrift store. Witam w moim vlogu. Reduce, reuse. I think we should look for shirts, because that's going to be the best bet material-wise. They're usually thin. I'm going to pull up the reference. Syndra. Me. How's the hunt? Good. The hunt was indeed very good, because I scored this guy. I would like to talk about an injustice, because we paid 60 zloty for a small woman's blue shirt and 30 for a pink, very large, men's shirt. It's called Pink Tux, but the shirt wasn't even pink! Okay, now that my rant is over, let's cut this pink shirt up. I'll start with the OB-like belt. I was in a trance listening to the new Espe song from the Tetris movie, and I somehow cut two little pieces. Did I only cut three? This one also has these pieces, but I'm just gonna connect them like this. In this case, the lining is the same fabric because it doesn't touch the skin and the edge will look better. I pressed all the seam allowances open to reduce bulk and stitched the lining and main right sides together, then turned them out through this hole I left in the lining. I finished it with a snap. It may seem weird that it's in the front and so visible, but there will be another piece covering it. From the same pink, I will be making the bow in the back. I start with the ties, eyeballing the amount of fabric I will need. Then I destroy the patriarchy by ripping the shirt with my bare hands. The ties have the most intricate design in this outfit, which Alex and I broke down into four separate color layers. First, I put on a maroon base. I fought with it a bit. Let it cool. Let it cool. Let it cool. Pull it. That's not good. Not good, not good, not good. But it eventually went on. You might see little pluses here as well which are not part of the design, but these are registration marks that I added to make lining up the designs easier. Which, I then screwed up one of them and was very confused why it didn't work. The next layer is a matte gold, which apparently... It's called... Then I put some light pink on, which I shook violently to cool down faster. And to finish it off, a gold trim, which you have to sing to to work. I made four pieces like this in total, and I thought I would cut them out, but it made more sense to trace the outline of the vinyl on the back, trace the remaining pattern with the pattern lined up to the previous mark, and then pin the back and front by the outline. I thought it'd be easy to just pin them like so, but it was way easier to use the iPad again to shine some light through. It may not look like much to you, but it worked really good in real life. With the patterns aligned, I could sew them together and then trim the seam allowance. This might be harder than I thought. I left myself with a very tiny hole to turn this to the right side, so I ripped some out to make the hole bigger, which I can sew back up later. It looks awesome, but it's a little too floppy, so I'm gonna try to stick some wire in it. I did a zigzag shape with the wire, hoping it would allow for good posability. Fantabulous! For the arm braces, I really wanted to add some texture other than the vinyl, so I decided to cut some strips and stitch them onto the pattern piece, as in the texture it appears that she has something wrapped over. I'm crossing the straps and stitching them diagonally along the folded edge. Then I cross another piece over it and stitch. Then back to the first angle, I make sure I overlap the first strip so that the raw edge is hidden. I stitch this together with a lining and flip it to the right side. calculations are correct I should be able to now flip this like so come on and if I won't be able to flip this out I will be doing the flipping out and now this would have to be somehow stitched together I really like how the texture adds to the design the pins require a lot of fabric to make them as poofy as in the model, and I'm cutting them out of the sleeves from the woman's shirt we bought. I then add this magical gold vinyl to instantly make it 10 times better. For the lower part of the legs, I did something similar to the arm braces and added vinyl too. 
I can now stitch the calf pieces on one side. I then gather the bell-shaped pieces to attach them into one puffy pump leg. I didn't think lining the whole thing was necessary, so I lined the calves now, as they will be the part that wraps on the doll's body the most. I joined the fronts and backs at the rise and sewed the crotch seam. The lining fabric I chose was nice, thin and skin colored, but it was fraying a lot. I could have overlooked this. Well, it is what it is. Very balloony. We like that. I think I need to undo this to line it. Shit! It needs to be right side to right side. So it should be possible. All right, Margaret. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really delusional at this point. The last step was to add the lining to finish the upper edge. It was late at night, but I was determined to finish this outfit because I was so close. Okay, just needs a little pressing and maybe some snip snip snipping. It's not easy, but is anything in life. After this brief, 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 <laughs> after this brief philosophical moment, I was ready to try the pants on. A bit cheeky in the back. I think it's pretty dang good. <sighs> nice. For the first time, I'm going to. In forever. <laughs> there be music. Na, na, na. For the first time, I'm going to work with natural mohair hair. I ordered a bunch of colors to do a perfect blend. On the splash art, it looks like she had iridescent white hair, but on the 3D model, everything is super saturated and it looks like a mix of purple, pink, grey and blue. I don't have much experience with natural fibers, so this might not be the perfect way of handling this, but I think this hobby is all about trying new techniques. First, I'm making wefts by separating the hangs and gluing the hair together. The fiber is pretty short compared to nylon hair, and I noticed that a lot of hair didn't get glued on the first pass. I carefully pulled the hair to save as much as I can and then I brushed the rest. From the saved fiber I'm going to do more wefts, but the problem is I have no idea where the ends of the fiber are. I can pull from both sides and separate the loose strands, then make it one again and every time some hair is going to be loose again and it can go forever like this. Never ending story. So I gave up and just cut a big part from one side and made a shorter weft. This fiber is wavy and Sindra has straight hair in the Spirit Blossom skin. So after all the glue has dried, I'm straightening the fiber. This pink is a little bit too warm for the design, so I'm adding a little bit of purple and cold pink pastels to the ends and setting it with heat. It barely shows on camera, but there's a difference in real life. I'm using a wig cap that I made for the previous doll, Ellie, but we didn't use it in that project. I lost my jar with the stick and I'm not in the mood for crafting a new one so I decided to go with a water bottle with a stick. Holds pretty well, let's try this. I used to apply glue with a brush or a silicone tool but I discovered that my finger works better. I can apply more glue and do it faster when I'm using fingers and the layer is so thick that I can apply only two layers and it's enough. Still too lazy to make the stand so we're using today a monster can. After trimming and painting I can start adding wefts. I'll go in spiral fashion starting from the back and I'm using light purple first. Then I'm adding the grey pink ombre that was colored with pastels and mixing it sometimes with a thin layer of purple. I decided to try using my finger here too and it works really nice. If you're not scared of feeling weird textures on your skin then I recommend this technique. And on the top layers I'm using wefts with silver, icy blonde and pink mix. Some of the light fibers also got a pink pastel treatment, so the general ombre effect looks smooth. I try to use not too much hair on the bottom part and add more when I go up. I'm skipping the part for now, because I'm not sure where the horns and the crown will go. Let's do some styling now. I finally had some time and energy to make a new stand for the head. Hooray! New jar with the stick. I'm cutting her bangs very carefully, trying not to cut too much. This fiber curls so fast and easy compared to nylon. I had to straighten some parts again. <laughs> She's going to have a ponytail and I'm taking the hair from the top and tying it in the back. 
Let's trim the loose hair on the bangs and start working on the horns. We printed these horns in white resin on our Elego Saturn II printer. I sanded some imperfections and started to paint it pink, purple and blue. This is nice, but definitely too saturated, so I'm adding a coat of pearl white paint on top. I added the purple stripes and they are ready. I placed them on the head trying to glue them with Uho glue, but it didn't want to hold the correct position, so I added Hulk glue, which is my favorite glue, in some places and now the position is right and stable. To make the transition from the hair to horns better, I'm wrapping a hair strand around the horn and the end of the strand become a part of the ponytail. Everything is planned, you know. I also added a few purple wefts on the top of the head for more volume in the ponytail. Then it's time for the crown. I'm painting it yellow and blue and I added a coat of golden paint to make it shiny. Off camera I added a few strands to the back of the crown and glued this piece directly to the hair and the wig cap. I like adding more details than necessary, so let's add some pearls and flowers to the headpiece. She also has a few little decorative ropes in her hair and I added one under the ponytail but it creates a hole. So let's fix it by drawing a strand of hair through the loop of the rope. After tying the ponytail, the hole is almost completely covered. The tiny detail on the back was a struggle, but with help of white glue, I managed to create this hairpin from a pink embroidery thread. <laughs> embroidery, better? Thread, beads and tassels. This week took so much time, but I love how it turned out. I think it's my best smart wig. I know the original model has shoes with that strap that goes in between your toes, like the traditional geta, but the smart doll feet can't really do that, so I'm making two crisscross straps instead. I had a bit of an aerial moment. I do have feet. <laughs> I made some insoles with cardboard and I'm simply gluing the straps from the wrong side. To make sure the strap length is good, before I glue down the other end, I wrap it around the doll's foot and check where it should land. When that's done, I simply glue the upper, which is the sole and the straps, to the shoe base. I think they look nice and white, so despite this being different from the original, we will keep them that way. We took another trip to another store to shop for accessories for this doll. It's shopping time. <laughs> it's just heaven. Are you in heaven? Speechless. So many different beads and cords and wires and metal thingies. <sighs> now it's time to put them to use. I will combine these tassels with a bead and a ring to add to the bottom of the bow ties. I made a hole with an eyelet to attach them together. Next, this thick cord gets attached to a strip of fabric. I secure the ends with hot glue so it won't unravel and another tassel decoration goes on the front of the belt. Let's make some jewelry. Nothing complicated here, just threading some beads on a pink embroidery thread. I love how these milky beads look on a colorful thread. They have this really cute iridescent glow and they suit perfectly with the rest of the design. We're also using some 3D printed elements that I painted pink and I made a belt, necklace and two bracelets that are perfect size for a human scale ring. After making the jewelry, I spent hours on making the vinyl applications look better, even better than they are already. I added dark brown to the sleeves and pants trying to achieve a 3D look and make it look more like metal. Then I couldn't stop myself from adding little flowers and tiny leaves on these flowy parts of the bow. Sometimes this is my way of procrastinating. I'm avoiding important stuff like hair or face or editing and I'm painting small decorations that are not even visible most of the time. But small details usually make a design so much better, in my opinion. Last thing I did was the eyes. I printed and painted this design, covered it with matte varnish and then added glue and glass cabochons. Here they look very foggy, but after some time the glue has dried and the design is visible. The last of the last parts that I did was these things. These really aren't sleeves, nor a vest. If you have a name to call it, let me know in the comments. 
I got the design from two vinyls, the beloved gold and iridescent, which was much different. It's much thicker. I need to recut this. That sucks. Let's see now. I already started here, but like the iridescent layer is not peeling. I managed to make it work and we did the design. I learned from my previous mistake and I did a little test and now I need to press this this way to see if it's still gonna be iridescent if I press it later. Okay, so this one doesn't take on texture as easily as the gold because it's much thicker. That's good. It's still gonna be sparkly. I pressed the iridescent layer on fine and spoke the words that would come back to bite me in the ear. This one sticks pretty quickly. I like working with it more than the gold. I tried layering the gold and... Oh no! I did not foresee the fact that vinyl on vinyl sometimes doesn't stick and this is the case. Yep. God damn it. I will need to rick up this the third time because I need to trim this off now. <gasps> I can save the gold pieces though. It was going so great but then this delaminated and I didn't know what to do anymore. I don't want to recut it the third time. Uh, maybe you can just glue it. I did end up gluing it and the gold layer went on fine. So let's push forward. I traced the shape of the, I don't know, epaulets, what are we calling these again? Onto some warbler as I thought it'd be the best material for this. It cuts decently well with scissors. Then I went to put the vinyl onto the warbler and realized something. This is a dramatic recreation. Whoa! I know you can see it, but it glows in the dark. Anyway, with some Yuhu glue, I stuck the fabric to the warbler and folded the edge under. Then I covered the wrong side with the first failed vinyl so that it didn't go to waste. Then I used my favorite mug, which I got from my boyfriend, to bend the warbler into shape with a heat gun. I stuck it into the belt and the outfit was done. This is how Syndra turned out. I love League of Legends characters. The designs are always on point, very well thought out, and the detail in them is just amazing. It's really easy to make a good looking doll from the League. I actually miss playing this game with my friends. I was never like super good at it, quite opposite probably, <laughs> but because we played it for fun and to hang out with one another, it has a special place in my heart simply because of the memories I made with my friends. Now, there is still a connection through League with friends, just doll friends, like Elisa, who made Ari in the same theme of Spirit Blossom. Most, if not all, of you already know her, but please check out her video too. Her art is amazing. What is your favorite game to play with your friends? Give us some recommendations in the comments down below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Bye! This video was made possible thanks to our Patreons. The biggest credit goes to our top Lost Sister tier supporters, Erica Warren, Aaron McCoy and Red X. We also thank our cousin tier patrons, Genevieve Dufloc, Amelia Blackwood, Andrea Brigidaire, Ghostly Gardens, The Barbie Witch, Bowen, Anxious Kato78, Inca, Stephanie, Tiffany Jeffords, Karaho, Landy Monk, Katie Baker, Karabu, Sivs Party, Dragon Art Customs, Ninja Star Dazino, Victoria, Dream Up, and last but not least, Catherine Naughton. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Ha 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 ha!